This is a Systems and Operations Manager 2012 Beta Orchestrator 2012 integration uh, series, and we're going to start off by setting up Orchestrator. So I've got my little cheat sheet here, and the first thing we're going to do is add uh, .NET 3 5.1 framework. And the Orchestrator setup is uh, pretty much a lot easier than the original setup. Um, I was never ever able to get the operations console even set up with uh, Orca or, uh, Opalis 6.3. A lot of the links and the Microsoft uh, workflow chart uh, said denied and whatnot. So it's nice to have everything kind of integrated into one. So here's our uh, our .NET. 4.0 and if we do the uh, setup with the forward slash Q it'll, it'll install it quietly. We'll also set up Silverlight and um, I'm going to have to change the order of this a little bit so instead of installing SQL next we're going to go ahead and set up our service counts. Then we'll install SQL then create the database. So I'm going to move some things around here. So you want to make sure that uh, your Polis uh, service account is a local admin on the box. You want to go to the local security settings, local policy, user write assignment, and go ahead and make sure that the service account can log on as a service. And just make sure it's not on the deny logon as service uh, list there. So I went ahead and set up MSQL offline as um, I've got an example of how to set this up, I believe, in the first or second in the series, the Operations Manager 2012 beta. You can follow the exact same. Um, install process as I've done there. So now we are going to give the Opalis Service Administrator account some privileges and I may be giving it too many privileges here but for the purposes of the lab it actually gets this up and running and this will probably be more well defined when the uh, no, we're no longer in beta. So we're going to create our database orchestrator And then we're going to come over to security and logins, new login, and we're going to add our Apollos service account. We're going to go into that account, go to properties, look at the user mappings, and choose the orchestrator database, and we're going to give it DB owner. And uh, that's pretty much been documented out in the forums. Uh, but I also want to give it a server role of DB creator. And this is a part that might be overkill, but, you know, better safe than sorry, I always say. So just verify those changes. And in my experience, if you don't do this you'll get all sorts of failure um, at the end of the, the finishing portion of the setup. Now doing this later may enable everything but just to be on the safe side uh, you'll want to set this up before installation. Alright so now we'll go ahead and check our, our firewall ports. Port 81 and 82 I believe are used for the um, console. And since this is a rebuild in my lab, uh, come to think of it, there might have been some um, 
CIS prerequisites that you need to go back and set up. I believe those I have those had already been set up in my environment, but uh, I don't think those were a big pain point. I think what we're covering here are most of the pain points. So we're gonna select TCP 81 and 82. Call this orchestrator ports. Now, something that uh, carries over from the uh, Apollos setup in the past are these uh, WMI firewall settings. And it looks like it may have made the ones that it needs, but to be on the safe side, I'm just going to grab all these DCOM and WMI and async and enable them. And this may not be a necessary step, but in the case of the lab here, I just want to rule out any sort of uncertainty while setting it up again. So we'll go ahead and enable those. So you always want to check uh, TCP and that it's enabled on your MSSQL server. I have a group policy that does this. And now we're off to the races. So we'll go ahead and install everything as one server here. All the roles on one server and got our little memory check bang. Now when you put your SA here, if you forgot to do um, local service, it would not let you go continue with the setup. So that, I like that uh, intelligence that's been built into the setup process. So here we're going to do existing database and we're going to grab our orchestrator database that we created with the elevated privileges. Now I've created an orchestrator administrator's management group, you know, a group security group rather. Actually, I may have called it uh, Opolis from a previous lab. I'm add that as management group administrators. And we'll go ahead and grant the uh, remote runbook connectivity. And everything else should be a go from this point. So I'm going to try to time lapse this and uh, bump us up to the uh, final configuration. All right, so now that we see finish, we know that the fruits of our labor have paid off by adding the uh, SA as the uh, database owner for the Apollos database. So now let's take a look at uh, the various components here. They seem very familiar, no doubt, as they look a lot like the Opolis setup. So we've got our management server, we've got our runbooks designers, which used to be called client, and we got our runbook servers, which used to be called uh, agent servers. So um, if we hop over to the Microsoft Connect site, we can get the, uh, the Opolis integration packs and the system center integration packs are the only ones uh, currently licensed for Orchestrator from what I understand. So we're going to go ahead and download those. Hop back over to our deployment manager and register IPs. Then we'll just go ahead and browse to our extraction point and grab our, our IPs.
And for now, I'm going to grab the ones I'm interested in. Accept the license terms. And now we have our integration packs. Next thing we want to do is apply these to, or deploy them to a Runbook designer. And notice to stop the run book designer services or something of the like. So be mindful of that in a production environment when you get to that point. All right, so we got some confirmations there of the uh, installation. All right, so stay, stay tuned for the second uh, video in the series.